something about uh, your digital bathrooms and what contributions they make to water conservation or energy efficiency? Um, well, several contributions really. We're not just looking at um, a reduction of water. Any, anybody can make that happen. So what our challenge really is this concept of ecological enjoyment. How can we still have a great interface to water, a great experience, but at the same time consume less? And I think if we, if we do a good job, consumers won't even see the reduction in consumption. Digital is great for that for a number of reasons. Everything from when you're in the shower, you're able to pause water, uh, shampoo your hair, and press play and the water comes and rinses, rinses your hair of course. That act alone can save thousands of litres or gallons per year depending what country you're in. Um, and it's a more positive experience, you know, because we know from our consumer research, consumers cower away from the shower to apply shampoo and then, they, of course, the water is running down, wasting away. And now with this simple pause feature on digital, you can press pause, shampoo your hair, you know, and it's, and it's a good experience. Um, presets, presets at the wash basin, things like washing your hands. Um, we find today consumers go to a one hand mixer, for example, and they try to find a temperature that they use every single day exactly the same, and yet they waste water again trying to find that temperature and flow. With digital, it's, simple, it's simply one button, and you can have your perfect temperature and flow, which means you, can, you have instant water at the temperature you've already selected, and again, it's really, I would say, much more efficient. It's more performance related. We also have things like presets. Again, you tend to shower and bathe in our research at the same temperature and flow every single morning. So yet you find yourself going to the shower, switching it on, trying to find that temperature and flow again. So once we, you memorize, let's say, your perfect shower, not our definition of the perfect shower, your definition, you can simply press your preset the next morning and there's your shower waiting for you. And again, that act alone saves an immense amount of water. What would really help in my home would be something that stopped my children leaving the taps around. Can you, can you offer anything in that area? Yeah, I can. Uh, <laughs> so we've got lots of products. I mean, I have two children also. Um, and it's, it's incredible amount how much water is wasted, just brushing your teeth, for example. So we've brought along some simple wireless pocks where they can educate your children um, when to brush their teeth or how to brush their teeth. They tell them by a simple display when to put the toothbrush under the faucet or the tap so the water will only come at a certain period. So then they'll brush their teeth in between that period and then be ready again, prompted to put their toothbrush back underneath the faucet. And so those simple acts, they're, they're engaging, they're fun. Also, when you're talking about children, they're the digital kind of, I would say, age. They're used to this kind of technology. My three and a half year old daughter can pick up my iPhone, find movies, navigate images and pictures. So children are really uh, clever. And if the interface is intuitive like this stuff is, um, you can really engage them and you can get them to reduce, again, reduce consumption of water, but still have fun in doing so. Absolutely. And I think um, something, else, something else that's really important, very important to the architectural community by whom we are surrounded today, um, design and Grow has always been known for top quality design of products. You're managing to achieve these uh, energy and water conservation efficiencies without compromising the, the, the strength of your design work. Yeah, again, I mean, we have, I believe in simplicity. We have three simple strategic pillars quality, design, and technology. And if you think of those three pillars, the overall kind of the arching theme is sustainability. So we have quality. Quality, we're talking about our products last longer and um, I would say they're efficient over a period. They should feel the same in five years time as the day you bought them. So that's what quality is about. It's about longevity, still great to use. Um, technology, it's about if performance and efficiency. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about our technologies. And of course, our third pillar design. And we find that we've created a great product, you know, a great collection when we have a really good balance of all three. And people, consumers really expect that. They expect a brand like ours, they expect the products to function perfectly. They expect them to have the latest technology. And of course, everybody wants to be surrounded by beautiful objects. So really, we have to deliver all three. And just uh, finally, one question to help, uh, help the architectural community themselves. Um, people are looking around for work at the moment. The, the economy is hard. Uh, which sectors do you think are going to be the best ones to be working in for an architect? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a very difficult question. Of course, um, it depends what markets we're talking about, but often in hard economic times, you start to see uh, a bigger interest from the architects community um, in things like public housing, perhaps hospitals, you know, those kind of areas we tend to see uh, an increase as governments um, start to apply more funding to that kind of area. So there tends to be things like that happening. But at the end of the day, I think there's always um, a need for good design, 
uh, innovation, creative thinking. And I think the architects that keep reinventing uh, what they offer, the creatives, the interior designers and designers that reinvent their thinking, I think they'll find an opportunity even in hard economic times. I think you're right. Your products are uh, used widely in the hospitality sector. Yeah. Um, how do you feel that sector is going to be for the next year or so? The hospitality sector. So, yeah, I think um, we saw, of course, last year we saw, I think, um, globally, I'm talking globally, so I have to generalise, of course. Um, I think there was a, a big change, a big shift in the economy. I think this year we see a positive uplift. Uh, hospitality, again, is coming, I, I would say, back on track. People, are, the investors are starting to gain more confidence again. Uh, but generally, I think if you're a global company like ours, there's, you can offset sometimes some of the struggles in certain markets with the positive things happening in others. So I think this is when it's a, a good time and you benefit, if you like, from, from being a global company like ourselves and having, a, let's say, a global footprint. And then, and then back to one of the things that you mentioned, uh, you said the public sectors um, could, could be quite strong in the next few years. Just talked about the hospitality sector. In both those sectors, I would imagine the, the sustainability benefits of your products could be quite useful to designers in the next few years. Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. I think what happens is, and, and this is, I mean, it sounds, it sounds bizarre, but I think for our brand, we've seen our brand in the economic downturn really gain market share. So even though the market, let's say, say is shrinking slightly, we're actually gaining significant market share. And that's simply because in hard economic times, people really start to understand the meaning of things and they're looking for value. That doesn't mean to say they want to spend less, they're just looking for value. A product, if it, you charge X, why? You know, why do you charge X? You know, why is that product different or the service, why is it better from your competition? And I think if you have something that's competitive, you're always going to do well, I think, in a market and people are always going to choose your products. We do very well, of course, in the hospitality and, uh, and public sector, just because our products have a great reputation for this quality, of course, that, that I keep talking about. And our brand has a good reputation for quality. And people are really looking, if they invest in something, it's going to last a long time and it's going to function well. At the same time, with the ecological, the, or the, yeah, the ecological savings come economical savings. And often we have, I mean, we have simple tools now like water calculators where we can simply calculate by buying one of our products or introducing one of our products into your project, they have a payback time of X. So just by simply, um, let's say, conserving water, which is good for the environment, at the same time can bring huge um, economic benefits. Excellent. That's really good. Thanks very much, Paul. It's been a delight talking to you. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you.